I often get asked, can artificial light look natural? I'm Joni Simon, food photographer and educator, and absolutely yes. But then I follow it up with another question. What kind of natural light are you trying to replicate? Because natural light looks different in different places at different times. There's no one singular look to natural light. Are you looking for something super soft where the shadows subtly fade from light to dark, like on a cloudy day in the Pacific Northwest? Or are you looking for like harsh, high contrast lighting like a summer day in Italy? Or do you want long dramatic shadows like you might find at sunset? Everyone has their own personal tastes and preferences when it comes to natural light, and there's no such thing as good light or bad light. Light is light. It only matters how you or your clients want it to look. So before we start talking about about artificial lighting, let's talk about lighting in general and what is your personal preference. Now, if you're not sure and you want to explore that a little bit or confirm, I have an exercise for you. You're going to start by creating a Pinterest board or a mood board or any kind of board solution where you can post a bunch of images. I've got this one where I'm continually adding to it. Then, as you come across images that you really like, that just sort of stop you in your tracks, especially the ones where the lighting really captures you, then pin those. Like the ones that just like take your breath away or make you go, ooh. I love that. And this activity will take some time. Don't just blitz through it. Let this happen over the course of a few days, even a couple weeks. Make it an ongoing practice to pin images that you come across, put them on your board and start to collect them. And don't overanalyze or overthink this. Just really literally go on your gut reaction. Just start collecting those images that you like the lighting. Then once you've collected around 50 or so, then take some time, like take a couple hours to yourself and look through all these images, review them and ask yourself, is there a common thread between all these images, in particular to the lighting? Are the shadows similar? Are the patterns similar? Is the direction, the contrast, are there some sort of patterns that emerge in the similarity of these different images that you've pinned? So for example, look at my Pinterest board. Are you seeing any commonalities? Any similarities? I mean, certainly some of them are stylistic as well, but especially when it comes to the lighting, you might find that you gravitate towards something specific. Now you also might be kind of like me and a little all over the place. Like I do like a wide variety of styles and that's great too, but it can be helpful just to see where do you naturally gravitate. But regardless of if you have one singular style that you're obsessed with or a variety of different styles, if you want to be able to create that look on demand, having an understanding of artificial light can give you the ability to bring that lighting vision to life. Because truth be told, it's many times easier <laughs> to do this with artificial light than natural because we have so much more control with artificial over how we manipulate the way that it looks. This is literally why I am such an evangelist and have been for so long about artificial lighting. Now, if you haven't dipped your toe into the artificial lighting pool yet and you're looking for gear recommendations because admittedly it can be super overwhelming to navigate, figure out which one's gonna work for you, where to spend money, where not to spend money, that we have our free Pick Your Perfect Light mini course where you can find out what is gonna work best for you because there's no one size fits all when it comes to lighting gear. So I'm excited to equip you with some new knowledge so you can make an informed decision. But now let's shift into demo mode and I wanna walk you through how I set up a continuous light to replicate the natural light look that I personally most naturally gravitate toward. Again, I use a lot of different styles in my food photography owing much to working with a wide variety of clients. But in my heart of hearts, this is a style that I personally love. And we're gonna use this image here as inspiration for the lighting. Now, in terms of my light, I'm using one of the recommendations from my mini course, the Godox SL 150 watt. It's an LED light. I've also got the reflector head and a five-in-one reflector, two light stands, and an A-clamp. Now, the reason that I went with this particular setup is I thought there's a good chance that you might already own one of these five-in-one reflectors or a diffuser for your natural light photography. These are a great tool for any food photographer because they are super versatile, working with both natural and artificial lights. This particular one is 150 centimeters by 100 centimeters. So now I start by putting the light on the light stand, then plugging it in. And if there's a cap on the front of your light, like there was on mine when I first bought it, make sure you remove it so you don't burn a hole in it. <laughs> 
<laughs> speaking from personal experience. Next up, you wanna position the reflector right next to the edge of the table. And then you've got your A clamp so that you can clamp that reflector to a light stand. If you have a C stand with a boom arm, that will totally work as well. Now with this setup and with artificial light in general, when we're trying to make a natural light inspired look, I like to imagine that our reflector is a window and the LED light is the sun. This helps me to just sort of navigate placement and thinking about where would the window be relative to my scene and where would the sun be relative to my scene. Now, because we're working with continuous light, we cannot control or eliminate the ambient light like we can with flash. So I'm making sure that the room lights are all switched off and the windows are covered. So I'm really only working with the light coming from my LED because other light sources in the room can start to interfere with my lighting, create kind of a muddy look. Plus the room lights most likely are a different color temperature from our LED lights, which can cause color cast issues in our images. So now I turn on the continuous light, I take a test shot, and this is where we look at the image and we assess how similar is this lighting to the look we were trying to create. The shadows are soft, but they lack some depth that I was going for in that inspo shot. So in my mind, I need to increase the contrast. And contrast just means that there is a greater degree of difference between the light and the dark tones in an image. Increasing the contrast intensifies the difference between the light areas to the shadow areas. And one way I can increase the contrast here is by creating harder light. So a harder light is created by a smaller light source. Because fun rule of physics when it comes to lighting, the larger the larger the light source, the softer the shadows, smaller the light source, the harder the shadows. So how can I make this light source smaller? Well, one way I can do that is to add the seven inch reflector, which helps to harness the light into more of a focused beam instead of spreading it out all over the place. And I know real quick, you're like, hold up, this is a reflector, that's a reflector. Well, like why is everything called a reflector? Truth be told, they do both serve the purpose of reflecting light. But now that you see I've added that seven inch reflector to the light, it's now concentrating the light and creating a hot spot on the diffusion material. And that is a smaller light source then relative to our subject in comparison to when the light was spreading more evenly across the diffusion material. But you can see there's still a nice bit of softness in the edge of the shadows because the light is passing through the diffusion material, helping to create a certain amount of diffuse light. So now we take another shot and we compare and you can see without the reflector versus with the reflector. Check out that difference of contrast. One little change can make such a big impact. And this is just one of of many potentially endless <laughs> different ways that we can manipulate artificial light to look like natural. Now, if you want help in creating these different looks, shaping and manipulating your light and understanding the foundational principles behind how lighting works, we would love to invite you to join us in Artificial Academy. It includes tons of step-by-step -step demonstrations, plus real active live support and a community of other food photographers to cheer you on and support you so that you can ultimately create the look of the lighting that you're going for. So thank you so much for stopping by the studio. It was great to see you today. I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, all right? Bye. More evenly a class, a class, a class.